Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farm and Life at La Forge. Today, Dad is going to be showing you our Murphy trailer. So you've seen this trailer in lots and lots of videos and we use it all the time. And he's going to talk to you a bit about when he first got it. So he got it obviously in Ireland and the things that he liked about it, the things that he didn't like, what he's changed since and what he's doing to it now. So he's made a few upgrades to it already, um, especially around this season for cows and calves. So he'll talk you through all of that and then at the end of today's video we'll also show you um so we're thinking of updating our light system up in the big shed so i'll show you there what we're going to be doing with that so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always if you do don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so here's our murphy trailer again jim murphy at i think that's what they're called still I uh, bought that tra trailer in 2003, brand new. It was the first 14 foot trailer he ever bought, met. Uh, he thought I was mad. <laughs> and uh, got the drawbar made a bit longer. I was going to make this trailer myself, but uh, priced all the bits. And he was the only one that would make it the way I wanted it. So uh, him, the, I put the dog box on it. Uh, it's handy if the dog was all. Uh, Muck and put when you're after cattle, you can put them in there. Uh, never give any bother. <coughs> it's a good heavy trailer. Uh, was looking at two other uh, trailers as well, but they wouldn't make it the way I wanted. They just wanted their own make. Uh, was staying away from Ivor Williams a bit because uh, <coughs> I used to see a lot of the sheeting used to come off the roof and this is a lot stronger here i found now i'd be bringing a lot of bulls and cows uh, now ivor williams are a good trailer as well but one good selling point for this trailer was the springs um, i don't know if you can see them there but there's all the there's grease nipples all them are all the shackles are have grease nipples and the other trailer is just slide back and forth now i have an ivor williams flat trailer it's a very good trailer but i'm uh, every couple of years i do have to weld uh, little uh, wear plates under the springs because they don't wear away so i have it in now uh doing a bit of a service adjusting the brakes it gets a lot of work because we're always strong cows and calves and all sorts of yokes um back and forth near nearly every second day now this was for sheep gates which i made myself so i put that on it because we had uh, 30 sheep in ireland because they were rare breed and i used to have sheep gates that used to hang on there i still have them and i bring them sometimes when i'm trying to load small calves so uh, <coughs> we got uh, this then this bear here then sticks down here on the ramp so when cattle are coming down or going up they don't bend the gates so this is what I did today. Uh, we put a chain here. Well, it just slips over this. Uh, so when you're somewhere where I am here in this yard, we kind of don't need it because we have it set up for loading. But some places on the other farm and that, it's not set up for trailers. So, uh, as I was going to say, uh, we have that there that you can, when, when the chain is on, you can just slip this off here. I just have it there for carrying the chain on it. So when you get to a yard, you can tie this back. So then when you have the cattle up, all you have to all you have to do is slip this up. You're not tying twines because uh, you don't. Sometimes you don't get time to be on on, on taking opening a knot of twine or wire or whatever. <coughs> so. We got a tank on this when we were getting it met. Uh, if I was getting a trailer over here, I don't think I'd bother with a tank because uh, the, the shit or whatever you call it is a lot drier over here. And that's our biggest problem over here is keeping, where well, we very seldom, we wash it about five or six times a year. But what happens is it's so warm here and it, it's not runny, uh, poo or shit, whatever you call it. Uh, so it dries up in it because what the heat here, 
it just dries up. And then if you're in the winter, in the cold weather, well, you can't have a power washer out because it'll freeze. And you're kind of, sometimes you might use it twice a day, the trailer, and more times it might be left there for a week. So it's not always, uh, I would like to wash it every time I finish with it, but time and it's just, uh, you wouldn't have it well washed and you'd have to use it again. So we're after putting this gate in it as well today. Uh, with the ring cows and can. And um, so I put that gate there, well it's mainly just a barrier. So the calves can go underneath and the cows can either stick their head or hang over. I shouldn't lose too much space because the cows will have their head hanging over looking in at the calves. Now, <coughs> when I do move two or three cows there, I've tried it a few times, um, the, you'll always find the calves lying in the front. Now, touch wood, they never have got hurt, but I'm just putting this in now because we're doing a lot of it these days. Uh, so the cat, I put a bit of straw in there in that piece, and hopefully the calves will uh, lie up there and no bother. Now, we have a dividing gate here, and sometimes uh, you'll be trying to get the calves, trying to get the calves up to the front. And then shutting the gate and then bringing in the cows. It's very hard when you're on your own. And the, the calves will loo and roar when you take them away from their mothers. So if we bring in two or three, that'll work, I'm almost certain. Uh, and the calves won't get hurt and there's still lots of room. Now, <coughs> this trailer will have it say, since 2003. What's that? 18 years. Uh, never let me down once, but the only issue I ever had was this dividing gate. Uh, I, when I said it to him the first day I seen it, when he had it, uh, it was, well, it was like if you went out to dinner and you got the same cooking as you got at home, you'd say, why did uh, I should have met it myself. And anyone that comes and sees it say, says that I made that gate myself. So I didn't. So it's just all put a bit of box hard on that and they're, they're very light. Now I put these on it here myself afterwards. It's kind of a stopper and a bracket because when you go to close the gate in a hurry it's very hard to, to find the little hole you'll be going back and forth. Plus if the gate opened the wrong way with cattle and it went forward to danger all the side of it. So. Um, that was the only big downsize I had to it. Plus, it was a very hard gate to move up and down. To, uh, <coughs> there was two latches on it. And I had to go head back here to get the sheeting on it afterwards. It wasn't aluminium, which I, I wanted as well. But other than that, now he made a very good trailer. It's still perfect. Uh, I wouldn't be selling this trailer <coughs> because there's something wrong with it or anything. I'm not, I hope. I might even keep it, but um, the biggest problem I have, uh, we do a lot of dealing in bulls, uh, stock bulls, well not an awful lot, but a good bit. So this will hold a stock bull in here, in this hat. And you can't put two stock bulls in together. Now, uh, it's not often we do bring them, but we do have to. So then this hat, you can't bring a stock bull. It's that little bit too small. So I was hoping I'd get to some of the shows this year uh, to look for a trailer or to see who was making trailers now. Uh, the next trailer that I would have bought at the time besides this well, probably was a Nugent, but they wouldn't make uh, the way I wanted. So um, the next trailer I hope to get uh, is, I'm going to make it a 16 foot long. And it's not to pack it up with cattle, just that if you have a group, a cow and a calf, if it went that way, or a cow and a calf here. Uh, you might fit a cow and a calf this side, but it's tight. Uh, you're always trying to twist the cow out of the way. So if the trailer was 16 foot, uh, it should just make it easier for bringing two stock bulls or something like that. Um, and I'd prefer a gate that you couldn't see through, a dividing gate, because... Uh, Cows that are two bulls that see one another are always trying to kill one another, especially if they're two strange bulls. 
Um, so that's it. Uh, loading gates, everything is okay. Uh, has done an awful lot of work. Uh, like I said, I like the, the springs in it. It's run very well behind the behind the, the Land Rover or the, the Hilux. And uh, can't fault it any other way, only the dividing gate. The, oh, the other other thing, but this was his first tank he ever made, on that, uh, on that uh, slurry tank, uh, you couldn't take up that. That was solid. So we have it now, you can take it up. Because when all grass or lumps of straw or anything went down, you couldn't clean it out. Um, so we, we put it there that you can take it up and clean it out with a shovel. But now I think if I was getting the, the, the next trailer, I wouldn't bother with the slurry tank. The big reason I got it for was back at home. Uh, where you came out of my house, there was an awful hill up onto the road. And if you moved a couple, three or four goes of cattle to be full of slurry, and when you'd be coming up out of my house, and it was the way into the house as well as the air, it was the one way. Uh, after one, normally every Saturday, uh, you'd see all the slurry uh, up around the gate of the house and uh, that didn't go down well with herself or myself either so that was the reason I got the tank in uh, to stop that so over here uh, I wouldn't you, they don't look for tanks and I don't think I'd be too bothered um, but other than that now I'm very happy with uh, now, I'd be watching them uh, American channels, and they have fabulous trailers out in America, the one, big long ones. And they don't have some of them, the 26 foot long. Um, now, I don't want that. If I had 16 or maybe 17 foot uh, tri axle trailer, uh, not to pack it up with cattle, because I have the big trailer, it's just for bringing uh, certain groups of cattle uh, that they'd be in, in the trailer nice and comfortable without. Uh, any problem. Now the loading gates and all are okay. Now there, uh, Ivor Williams put aluminium in there. I had to put timber because the cattle used to stand up on them and uh, bend down the bears. Now that wants more timber but I was hopefully, hopefully it only get a lot of uh, aluminium the next time I put it on it. So when we go to bull cells or anything with this trailer, uh, Everyone does be out looking at, and I could have sold it ten times over. So um, over here, up when we came here first, all there was was uh, everyone had little white vans, and there was no four-wheel drives. But now they're all uh, nearly every second farmer here now has a four-wheel drive, and they're all thinking about buying trailers. And uh, a couple of times I had to do work for neighbours with this trailer. So uh, they'll be always inquiring where do you get the trailer and uh, blah 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 all that. So uh, what uh, some of the bigger guys then um, that hadn't the Land Rovers to have it's like a, a van with a, a body built on the back of it. But now they're saying that's getting so expensive, and when they have a four wheel drive, a trailer makes more sense, which it does. Besides so, uh, insuring two machines so uh no the, the trailer is uh the school interest now in trailers like that over here and uh like i said anywhere we go to a bull sale or anything like that and that's part you'll always come out and you'll see lads looking under and this and that and asking lots of questions about it so <laughs> um and there is some Ivor williams but over here but they're nearly all either horse boxes and just two wheels uh, so that's all I think I have to say on this trailer. Uh, just, just went through it now because it gets a lot of work every year. And if you don't get it under now and again and grease it and do all the bits, uh, it, you know it'll let you down, all right. But uh, it's, it's nice and low as well. Another good thing about what people like and I like myself is uh, the air can go straight through the top of it. Uh, now you can close up the front door if you want, uh, if it's really cold or very wet weather, but very seldom I do. And uh, that's about it, and I hope that that gate should work, that little gate. 
and uh, it hangs on the side there as well. I'll show you. I, I made a place on the side that uh, when I'm finished with it, it'll be just hanging on the side and there whenever I want it. So um, I've put a bit of paint on it now and uh, go hedge cutting for leaving. That'll do. I'll show you the when it's on the side now and that's it. Now there's the gate onto the side and the two catchers go into the back there and fits on there nice and neat. So uh, like I said it was painted up now and that's that job out of the way. Uh, I just had this hedge cutting now for a few days. Well I'll be hedge cutting now till March really on and off. And uh, just a few long roadways and that was begin to build up. So uh, that's all I think I have to say on the trailer. Okay. So <coughs> we're here, uh, big shed. Uh, we're doing a bit of a, an upgrade on the lights here, uh, the wraps. There's fluorescent lights in it, but they're very bad. They never work out. And uh, we're always changing lights every year. So I don't know whether it was Laura or Emily bought one of these on the internet. It must be there a year now more. So we did a test last night with this big long pole and had it plugged in to see what it'd do before we ordered it. <coughs> so this super light out of them. So you can actually rear them up. When they're just like that, it's grand. The show, and there's a light here in the bottom, it shows a big area. So we're gonna put two in each pen, and four along the passageway. And then we'll see that shed in afterwards. And I need a couple for the garage, because eyesight's not great now, and lighting is important. So uh, <coughs> we're putting up uh, 12 of these in the shed. So it should be like a spaceship and uh, it's just sometimes it's uh, when you have a cattle in it it's hard to see uh, cows or what's going on and this and that so uh, or when you come up here some nights now there's only three of these for lesson nights working and it's very dull so uh, yeah we're getting uh, we'll put up all these now hopefully there'll be another video on putting them up and um, the super light maybe I'll plug it in there and show you They're not fluorescent, they're LED. No, I think they're fluorescent. We bought, we priced the LEDs over here for LED fluorescent lights, as we call them, the long ones. And uh, they were fairly expensive, plus it takes a good time to put them up. These just hang in and I can just connect them into where there was an old fluorescent. So, um, <coughs> they'll work out a lot cheaper and hopefully better and I won't be changing bulbs. Then for lessons, it's not, if it's not the starters, it's the bulbs or else they're gone. Now the last, the last for lessons I bought had no starters in them. If people know them, there's a little starter on them. Uh, but they just go of a shot and uh, they're a throwaway job. So uh, LEDs are the, the future. So uh, hopefully uh, these should brighten up our life. Okay. So there it is now all painted. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.